becoming a first rate duelist uh interview series here we have a guest we have Raphael and Evan do you go by Raph or Raphael or what whatever you prefer so fine you know what I mean okay I'll call you whatever I feel like and he just won the European remote to YCS and previously he won two other YCSs is that true that is true okay cool uh so he is a pro player he's he he was at worlds how'd you do at worlds by the way oh i went two free oh okay i didn't do very well okay yeah. well that's okay he was at worlds and that was dope and uh he agreed to let it's, me interview uh, him it's the hardest local you ever play <laughs> yes uh i will probably never get to worlds i will probably just continue to bubble at locals for the rest of my life so yeah um great okay so we have some interview questions chat uh i'll go through questions but you can interrupt and ask questions at any point um but why don't we start by letting raf uh i don't know introduce yourself tell us about you uh oh dear uh okay <laughs> so i am uh rafael nevin i'm from the netherlands i am 23 years old I study history, although study is a uh, should be in quotation marks because uh, usually like most of my time goes towards playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, yeah, I've been playing the game for like uh, like 10, 11 years now. Uh, and I've been like becoming kind of decent and going to like real events since I would say 2015, 14, like 16. Um, like I went to like some YCSs in 2013 with my, my grandparents and stuff like that, but I was, I was never doing like super well. And, uh, I took my first YCS in 2014, but to be fair, I was still complete scrub back then. And I continue, continued to be for like quite a while. Um, and then I kind of popped off at like 2017 when I was won my first YCS. And after that year, you know, like I started to go to like the States as well for like events. And uh, I'm glad I did that because I met most of my like, your, uh, like m most of my close Yu-Gi-Oh friends uh, like in North and South America. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Right now, of course, I took a break during Corona because I, I really don't like remote duel. Um, I, I, I have a hard time taking it seriously, especially like Dex Um, <laughs> and I, uh, remote duel in general takes a lot of uh, like away from the game that that's important to me. Uh, not only like meeting people out at real events, but also gameplay wise. I think there's a lot of like skill in Yu-Gi-Oh that, that involves like human interaction, like especially if you can't see your opponent's eyes. Um, that's a big deal, I think, for, for people that like use their opponent, how, how they act and, and like behave in like giving away how good their hand is, like how how much they react to a play like you, uh, you're making and then you can kind of like get information from them. Uh, all those things like kind of disappear in module. Like I'm not even talking about like that people say like, oh yeah, remote duel is full of cheaters, blah, blah, blah. Um, I definitely think like in remote duel, like cheating happens. Um, but yeah, that also happens as your in real life events. I, I like the, the, my biggest problem with Moto is like that the certain skills that you have in Yu-Gi-Oh uh, and in different like card games are just not there because you were like behind a camera. Um, so I just took a break for like a year, and I recently only got back. Um, I skipped like a lot of the an Emancipator format and a lot of like the virtual world format with like BFZ and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting back into it, though. Wait, so what deck did you take to the YCS that you won? Uh, I played Tribegate Zoo. Okay, cool. Uh, and what led you to choose that deck? Um, I think the deck, like, was the best position in, like... So, like, uh, in, a, in a format like this, where we have, like, five, six playable decks, like realistically playable decks you could take to an event. I don't know if you're following the the other two YCSs, but like, so I won with Trizu and then Pack won with Frank is and like a few minutes ago, Andres Taurus won with Drytron. <gasps> you won with Drytron? Oh my god. Be... Okay, sorry, go on. I love Drytron, go on. 
Yeah, no, so like we're probably gonna have four different decks winning four different voices, which like kind of like tells how the format kind of is right now. Like there's so many decks, and if there's so many decks, um, it's very important that your own deck can actually play a lot of like non engine cards that can combat the meta, like different kind of hand traps or tech cards or whatever. Um, and a deck like, for example, Drytron, I didn't pick it, was like the amount of non-engine cards you can play, or it's very limited, it's usually six. Um, while a deck like Tribrigade can play like 12 hand traps very easily. Um, that's why I think Prankits is also like such a good deck right now, because you have like a lot of like flexible spots. Um, so that's kind of why we went for Tribrigade. And then the Zoo Engine is like superior to like playing Rescue Cat, because like going second is so much better. Uh, with the Zodiac in your deck. That's fair. Okay. Um, so you, you've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh, you said, for 10 years. Like, did you have a natural talent for it? Or, like, when? at what point did you become, like, good at the game? No, I don't think I had a natural talent. I started, <laughs> like, very... Like, I, I was very bad for, like, a lot, a lot of years, and... Uh, I started like 2012, and then in 2013 I won our our country's like national championships. Which you you guys don't have that at the states. You you call what you guys have is is of course the WCQ, and you got you guys call that Nats, like Americans do that. <laughs> but it's not actually nationals. I feel because, attacked. Like I'm just the nationals is just for the. <laughs> nah, it's just something I, I was triggered by when people like in America said like, yeah, are you going to nationals? And like, you guys don't have nationals, you guys have continentals, which is the WCQ, which is for North America. And we have that too, it's called the European Championship. But what Europe has as well is like all those individual countries have their own national championships. So I played the Dutch national championship and I won when I was like 15. And uh, at that point I was like, actually thinking I was a big deal and stuff. I was like, oh shit, I, I, won, I won nationals and uh, uh, I'm, I'm super good. And then I wasn't, I, not at all, but like that mindset kind of, I think, hold me back and I didn't top for like entire like two years afterwards. Um, I think when I actually got like decent was 2016 starting, like when I got um, adopted by Complexity Card Gaming, which, which uh, at that point was the best team in the world at like, big names like uh, Joshua Schmidt, uh, Marcello Barberi, you know, Lorenzo Santoni, like uh, so many like insane names. Um, and at that point I started like making a lot of progress and actually learning a lot. And you'll see that as well if, at my like record uh, that uh, I had two YCS tops and a European Championship top when I joined that team. And then when I joined that team, I, I, I got two more YCS tops in a row and I think that's all because of, like I was like talking to people who were so much better than me. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, when I got decent was like from 2016 onwards. Oh nice, yeah. So like, what goes into being part of a team? Is it just you have like, hey, what's up, Tassim? Uh, oh, we have a celebrity in the chat. We have a commentator here. Oh my, two celebrities. Uh, like, what what goes into having a team? Like, how do you join a team, and what does a team do? Uh, my perspective on teams has actually made a big change the last couple of years. When I joined Complexity Card Gaming, uh, my uh, I was I was like I left I left a team uh, a Dutch team, uh, just me and some friends basically, and then I went to to like CCG and uh, my perspective on team then was like the CCG philosophy was that the team is a family, and uh, everything is is like. Should suppose you should should share everything with the team, and also uh, you should not share information with people outside the team because you want to have the team wants to have the best chances to win an event or do well at an event, and that means that uh, you, the information needs like all the information needs to go into the team, but nothing needs to leave out like uh, leave the team. Um, that's the philosophy we went by for like a couple of years, and at that point I was very. Uh, adamant that, that was the right philosophy although looking back on it I, I think uh, that was wrong or at least like was a, was problematic because the team especially when the team gets big um, and has multiple nationalities which in, in our case it was uh, you got the issue that people had their own private circle with friends or people they would travel to the YCS with 
that would like automatically get the information as well because they would play test with one of our team members. That was unavoidable. Um, so as as teams got bigger, uh, that was something that that was just not sustainable. That philosophy of like everything has to be stay into the stay into the team. Um, and uh, that's one of the things. Looking back at it, I don't think that works. I think it's very. It's it also like I think the entire team is a family uh, thing. Is 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 is. It was it was very wholesome at that point. But looking back at it, I think it's quite quite like irrelevant if you wear the same shirt uh, as someone else. As long as you, if you can test and theory with that guy or or that circle, that's way more important than if you wear the same shirt. Like. For this wise, yes, I, I talked with uh, with Herman, uh, with uh, Sebastian Todd, uh, Bowden, uh, Luke Parks. All of them are in different teams, or I have different sponsors, rather. Um, and that's completely irrelevant. Like it's all about like the people that, like, how good you can work together and stuff like that. I think like looking back, my my opinion on teams right now is that they're irrelevant, and uh, I think. I'm really happy with my team because my team is basically a sponsorship. Like I'm part of Team Jobber, um, which is like um, it's very nice because like if you want, there are like a lot of really good pe people you can talk with and 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 play play test with. But you're not forced to like share everything with everyone because you couldn't because there are like 25 people in that team. Um, and uh, no one expects that. So like everyone is like ready to help anyone whenever, but you're not forced to do anything uh, you don't want, or you, or you, and you don't have any rules of like you can't share things with people outside of the team, which uh, became problematic at CCG. So yeah. uh, right now I, I like that's why my perspective on teams like kind of changed. I think right now they're quite like irrelevant if you're in a team or not. Okay. What is the best piece of Yu-Gi-Oh advice you've ever given or gotten? Um, it's not really advice. It's 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 a short like anecdote of what it has a lot of impact on me. Um, in 2016, I was playing the top eight of the European Championship, and I don't know if you know this, but the top four goes to the World Championship. So I was I had I had to win one more match to to go to Worlds. Um, and I lost. And then I don't know if you know this name, but Stefano Memoli, which is a uh, he, he's a very big uh, like Italian player from back in the day. I think he won Euros. He went to Worlds, like. Um, and someone I, at that time and still today uh, I really looked up to as a player. So um, he asked to see my deck, and I was playing Cosmos. I was like, okay, I give him my deck. After I was still heartbroken, I was crying. Like I was like, <laughs> my friends were like comforting me because I just missed my chance to go to Worlds. You know, it's the dream of everyone who plays this game. Um, and I gave him his deck, my my deck, and he looked through through it. I wasn't I wasn't even paying attention. I was just talking to people about the match that I lost. Lost. I gave my deck back, and we went to dinner. Um, and a few hours later at the dinner table, I looked into my deck and one of the Cosmo towns had like little note in it and it said read me. And so I read it and it says in, in broken English because his English wasn't very good, like uh, something like, uh, um, like right now uh, you might be sad, but your moment will come and uh, like something like, uh, like you shouldn't worry about like, like a loss because like you, you always like get like better results in the future. Oh, and coming so from funny. like so someone like a such so, like someone from like uh and then he told my friends that they shouldn't tell me immediately i should like find it myself later so like they all knew it was there i would just find it like on my own moment <laughs> and uh like coming from from like such a big player at that point where uh, it was like really impactful on me and uh i still like always think for if because like i also like scrub a ycs uh like uh once in a while and that's still like like that, 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 like little note is still like important because like it's it's just like okay this event didn't went well, there's always a next one, and that's usually where I try to focus on then. Uh, so it's very important to like not like it's important to like analyze your losses after an event like what went wrong, but not to get like depressive about them. So that's like kind of uh, that's I think is in general very important in life, but like yeah that's in Yu-Gi-Oh especially very important. Because you can't win them all. That's sweet. Yes, that's true. You can't win them all. It is impossible to win everything. But I will still try to win everything. 
I don't know. I tasted victory. Sure. Yeah, you should try for that. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, this month I won two locals on top fours, but the last two locals I did, I did not top, and it has made me very sad. But that's okay. I just want to be on sure. Yu-Gi-Oh! TV, you know? You know what Yu-Gi-Oh! TV is, right? No, what's Yu-Gi-Oh! TV? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! TV is the Konami live streams that, uh, like, oh, you were on Yu-Gi-Oh! You TV. Mean. So I want to be on Yu-Gi-Oh! TV, Gee. and I got my invite to the qualifiers in September. No, Yu-Gi-Oh! TV is real! Shut up, Tatsum! Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh! TV is real. I want to be on Yu-Gi-Oh! TV. That's why I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! every day, so I can get better. But I'd be curious to see how that Drytron listed. Um, hint, hint, chat. Go I find that be, list. Uh, I used to be, like, very afraid of, of feature matches, because, like, um, in my first Wises that I topped, I got the feature match from Top 32, and I misplayed like an idiot. And uh, after that, I was so horrified that I, I refused feature matches for like two years. Oh. Because I was so afraid of them. Uh, then at Wises Berlin, on, like round eight, I got another feature match, lost again. And then I, I refused feature matches for like another year. So I was actually the opposite. I didn't want to, I, would, I never wanted to get on, on, on feature. Because I was so afraid to lose again. Well, I didn't say I would do well. I would probably have super anxiety and just misplay and, like, accidentally no, cheat fair. and get, like, harassed. I don't know. It, it would just be a disaster if I got on Yu-Gi-Oh! TV, but I still want to be on Yu-Gi-Oh! TV. So, we'll see what's up. Yeah, I guess it, I guess <laughs> it is something. Like what that. advice would you have for someone who wants to get better at the game? Uh, subscribe to uh, Double Duelist Academy Patreon, of course. Cool. Well, I already have Cody. Like shame, shameless plug. <laughs> oh, okay. You chose Cody over us. Okay, interesting. I think uh, I think the interview is over. Oh. No, um, I think I think uh, what advice? I don't know. Like in general, uh, I think it's very important how much like to spend a lot of time on this game if you want to actually like really get good. Uh, and I know that's easy. To say especially because not everyone like has the time to do this like as much to put because normal people have a life like um so it's very hard but like especially like, yeah, putting in the time and going to events and keep going to events even though you might think like okay i'm not gonna do well etc like i went to all the european wises for like two years in a row didn't top any of them but like at every event i kept meeting people um I kept talking to more people, I got better, uh, I, I took like a lot of like away from the losses uh, and eventually like, all of the experience will definitely like add up. Um, so that's like if you're in that stage, definitely like keep going to events. Um, you just like eventually you will definitely like break that bubble. Like I bubbled a lot of events before I like actually like broke that curse and I like, got to my first stop. Um, so yeah, don't be like, like not, not like, like, uh, discouraged like if you if you keep bu keep you keep bubbling like thinking oh, okay this game is not for me like keep going to events for sure uh and yeah definitely just put in the time um find a good circle to test with with people who have the same goals um like it's, it's still fun to play at locals with like people who are more casual than you but if you find people who have the exact same goals in the game that that will help a lot because you you just keep each other going for sure um yeah in short i think that's a good start Okay, awesome. Yeah. Uh, what is the best deck? Right now? Yes. Uh, try begin Boo! You. Boo! Wrong answer! Boo, try again! <laughs> oh, that, that, that's definitely the right answer. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, like, that, that's what I'm saying, like, this format has so many viable decks, like, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I, I, it will also be probably event dependent, because like I said, I thought Prank is a really good deck. Uh, now that it has one, probably people will, like, side Context C or Nibiru or something like that. Uh, so that, that will change the meta a little bit. Um, I don't know, like, I think Star Tri Trizu is still, like, very, very strong. Um, but there, there's not really a, a tier zero deck right now. So. Okay, fair enough. Um, what did you, what do you do to overcome your nerves and avoid misplays? Um, well, I still make, make misplays, of course. But like, I think it's very important to, uh, um, after you make a misplay, to not get like. Uh, 
uh, rattled up about it. Because if you, let's say you, you lose game one to a misplay, what I used to do, or let's say you lose a match at a YCS, um, if that match, like, you should always analyze it for like for five, ten minutes, but after it, you should clear your head. Um, what I would usually do is like, I go outside the venue, get some fresh air, get some drink, and then prepare for the next like round. Because if you, if you get that like loss inside your head and you're still thinking about it when you're gonna sit down for the next round, your opponent is already like immensely ahead because you're, you're just not focused. And that would happen to me a lot, like uh, a few years ago. I would go like 5 6 0 at every YCS, and then I would lo lose one, and I would immediately lose like another one. So I would go 5 0, 5 2, 6 0, 6 2, and then I would keep winning some, and then lose eventually on the bubble. But I would always, if I lose the first one, my second loss would always be right after. Because I had that like, uh, like, mentality of like after our first loss like oh no now i'm gonna bubble again i i made this in this mistake if if i would have done this that would have been different and i would just not be focused on the next round so getting that that loss like that round that you lost out of your head before the next one i think that was very important for me um work on that okay yeah that makes sense yeah i feel like when i misplay uh, it really like gets me down and I get really frustrated and it's just like a cycle, you know Let's yeah. see. Uh, Someone said and I I don't know what he means by this. I don't know the context He said on Twitter quote-unquote. Why always four to one cards? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it has multiple reasons um, one of them is, is superstition because uh, all my wins have been with 41 cards. Oh my. Uh, so like the national win, all three white wins, there's always 41 cards. Do you believe in um, scopes too? Just not, kidding. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, you're right. Yeah, superstition doesn't exist. It's just like, it's, it's something. <laughs> but the biggest thing is like, I, I think it's funny to like, like mess with people. Um, a lot of like Yu-Gi-Oh players are very, uh, like, I wouldn't say they're, like, in the Church of Hoban, but, like, they are very strict on playing 40. And I think it's just kind of funny. Like, the, the difference, like, mathematical between 40 and 41 is so small, it's, like, almost negligible. And uh, people just get very triggered when you play 41, especially my friends. Sometimes, like, the, the, the Weisses in Chicago that I won, all my friends were playing the, the same deck, right? Card for card, because my friend Vlad has, like, made it, and we all just, like, played it. And, and then everyone like added a little bit to like the deck and uh, it was perfect, like, the deck was perfect, 40 cards. And then like, I just added one random jackalope because I, I thought it would be funny. And I said like, <laughs> oh yeah, I, you know, I run, I run Prague with 41. So if I make this deck 41 as well, well I'm gonna win again, you know? <laughs> and then like, they just like laughed at me for being dumb. And, um, and then I ended up winning, and then I, I pointed it out to them, and that's still in the deck profile. My friend Darren gets so, like, triggered about it. It's, it's just good times. So, like, uh, I don't know, like, it's also something that's just really, really funny. Like, for this one, YCS, Herman and I just made a, a 41 pack, because we, we thought it would be funny, usually. <laughs> like, usually it's just because people get very triggered about, like, why is he playing 41? It's so incorrect. Like, 40 is the most optimal, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know. I just get I just get a, a little giggle out of that. I think it's very funny. I like you. So I like the no way this reasons. man thinks. Just doing forty one to piss off people. I like that. You are now my favorite. I, think, I, I know personally <laughs> appreciate it. Now personally, I think that's I think that it's just like funny. Yeah, Tess, I'm sorry. Raphael is now my favorite uh, Dutch Yu Gi Oh player. Okay. Of course, uh, of course. How can I? How can a player find their personal place and deck style? Uh, personally, I don't really believe in 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 play style or personal like deck style. Like, but I don't. know, That's just me. Like, I've done well with combo decks with and with control decks. I also have done like horrible at, at events with combo decks and control decks. Like for me personally, uh, it's very like it's kind of irrelevant. Like what kind of like you can can have a preference, I guess, but. For me, it's just really important that the deck like takes certain boxes. Like it needs to be consistent for like eleven rounds. Um, it, it, I, I need to be confident in it to like actually beat a lot of mirrors, 
And uh, sometimes you can play something like counters the meta, depends on, on like how, like how much defined it is. But like I, I I'm not a person that says like yeah I'm also gonna play combo like always combo. I have friends who do that. I have friends who always think combo is better because it, the combo decks usually have the higher ceiling. And usually uh, having a higher ceiling means you can do more with your cards, which usually means it's better. But that doesn't mean it's always the right choice for, for a certain event. So I would always like try to keep an open mind and, and not like sh like like tunnel vision towards the combo deck, even though usually that's where you start looking because those are the most powerful. But yeah, I, do, I don't have a preference. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think you, you should like, figure out for yourself what kind of decks you like. But I usually just play what I think is best. and. What, what whatever like my friends and and my circle thinks is is best like I don't really or whatever Vlad makes because he's broken at the game so if he says your deck is good I'll I'll instantly play it. Wait, is Vlad um, Hypnocorn? Is yeah. that the same one? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Vlad. Oh, that's why Tatsum got mad at me when I was like, Vlad, are you good at this game? <laughs> oh, it all makes sense. Vlad is great. Okay, we that have a. <laughs> We have a question in the chat. What do you like about Yu-Gi-Oh over other games? Uh, I like that you can interact with your opponent on the on their turn. Like I have, I played one Pokemon tournament in my life, and that was something that was very like confusing to me. That after your turn is done, you just sit back and wait until it's your turn again. And that was kind of weird for me. Uh, maybe some people like that, but I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, that felt very weird. And to be honest, like that's the only other card game I've ever tried to play. I think so. I, I can't really compare it with like Magic or or anything else. So. Okay. Fair enough. Awesome. How are you feeling? What do you mean, right now? Yeah, I'm just checking in to see how you're feeling. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm a bit tired, but yeah, it's fine. Okay. We're doing fine. You're not like nervous or anything. No, true that. Yes, you should be nervous because you and I are gonna duel in a little bit, and I have so many victories, like getting second oh. place in a 180 person tournament in New York. So watch out. Okay, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm already getting nervous. That's crazy. That's okay. good. Yeah, I'm gonna get crushed. Like, my, I just I just win locals, but locals is not a big deal, so. Okay, uh, the next question is, um, what are some lesser known tips for deck testing? Um, yeah, I don't know if this is lesser known, but um, I do think a lot of people test on like, they, they test on like a wrong way which I, I see a lot of people at locals do this, like, or, or friends even, that are like, uh, they would like, they would like try and win in testing, which is the dumbest thing ever. Um, because if you're really testing like the, the deck or certain like side deck cards or like certain combos, you and the guy who you're testing with or girl, um, you should try yes yeah, you have the same goal trying to figure out or if if what you're testing is good enough is if it's consistent if it works in the scenarios you're trying to test that's you're both trying to get the same information no one should be trying to win that game no one should be like walking away from your testing session and thinking yeah i six owed him yeah let's go <laughs> like that's not that's not the point of testing your deck that's just playing casually which is fine there's nothing wrong with that but that's not testing. Like casual playing and trying to win, uh, when you're just chilling with with, a, with another one and playing and stuff like that, that's completely fine. But it's not testing. And uh, I think a lot of people get that wrong. They try and win in testing and stuff like that, and that's that creates a very weird like situation when you're trying to, especially when you do take backs and stuff like that. Like you're trying to like figure out the most optimal play. Like I always try to like take back as many things and try if there's still a way to like beat like the board that that my opponent makes or whatever and it's not about like me afterwards kind of after like 10 take back saying like yeah okay one over me 
<laughs> because the score is irrelevant. It's not about like winning that game. It's like uh, both me and my opponent, or usually just a friend, we were trying to find out like if this is possible. How does this matchup like works? If you do this, how do, if you do this? So like if you try and win and in, 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 in you thinking you're testing, you're just delusional. That's kind of my take on it. I like that. I'm gonna put that on a poster. If you're trying to win in testing, you're delusional. I like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice quote, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, we have a question in the chat. Since you asked about his favorite piece of advice, what about advice he has to give? Well, sorry, what, what advice? I, what, sorry? Yeah, uh, so I asked you about your favorite piece of advice you got, and you told us that really cute story. So we would oh, like to yeah, know yeah, yeah. what about advice you have to give to players. Uh, I mean, I kind of already said that what I think is most important is like finding your own testing circle, going to a lot of events. Um, yeah, that is that's definitely like the big, the, the best like way to start. Subscribe to Duelist Academy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, f I think, I think, uh, also like playing a lot. I think DB is kind of boring, but DB laddering is like useful, although, like. Just having a good like circle to theory with because most of the things you can just theory you don't have to actually like test them. Um, is is the most important and you just need to find people who have the same mindset like if 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 they want to top their first YCS and you want to top your first YCS that's that's the people you want to like actually test with for an event, not the people who like casually go to local one week. Which there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to have, like, if you have certain goals in this game, you should, like, find people who have the same goals. Because otherwise, like, um, you are not going to make the, the, like, the quickest progress. Okay, that's fair. Also, thank you, Pedro and Mario, for the raids very much. Okay, uh, what do you do if you experience burnout? Uh... Wait, have you experienced burnout? When I was doing the the Rolls race actually in 2019, yeah, that was very stressful. But I didn't really like solve that. I just like had to keep going because I had a I had a I had a, like a regional or a YCS every every weekend basically. So I had to like just keep going basically. Um. Yeah, and after that year, I definitely felt very like burnout, and I was actually thinking of never doing the Rolls race again. But because Yu-Gi-Oh has like taken a break, uh, I'm definitely like changing my mind on that. But yeah, like it's definitely not if you, if you, if you like like not like there's not a lot of people who are actually gonna experience this because no one is that it's like as crazy to like go on full world race like Yu-Gi-Oh for one year because like I literally like, quit my university for a year to like actually like go to regional every year uh, every week so because I needed the points. Um, which is like in hindsight is kind of nuts, but yeah, that's definitely when I felt very burnout. And yeah, there wasn't really a way to solve that. I just had to keep going because like you can't like take a break for two weeks because then you're behind in the points. So. Oh, I don't see. really have a good answer on this one. Okay. Yeah, I did a locals last night at seven p.m. and then I did one at five a.m. in UK. And now I feel burnt out. Why would you do that? <laughs> I couldn't sleep and like this nice British person asked me to do their locals and I happened to be awake, awake so I said sure I'll do it. But then I got really dejected because I didn't do well. And then I slept for an hour and then- but Those are remote dual locals, right? Yeah. That's- that's terrible. That's not- <laughs> why would you play remote dual like locals in general? That's just awful. Because I have to get on Yu-Gi-Oh TV! And that's remote duel. That's why I'm doing remote duel locals every day so I can get used to it and get on Yu-Gi-Oh TV. I see. <laughs> okay. What are you thinking? You're No, sorry. Face. I think that's stupid. <laughs> that's stupid. No, I think that's stupid. Oh my god, what should I do? Do, do you have in I don't know, do you have in real life locals at your place I already? Do. Or I no? do. I do way better in in real life. Then go to Then go do those. Yeah, why would you play more remote dual than like necessary. I don't understand. Like, well, it's a terrible way to experience the game. Well, my thoughts were like maybe my locals aren't competitive enough because I shouldn't be topping slash winning every locals at my level. That doesn't make any sense. 
But you think you you think random UK locals are are, are competitive? Uh, there were some competitive people on the list. They had those little like freaking Konami pictures, you know, like the one that you had. So. Oh, you mean the chibi ones? Nah, almost <laughs> everyone gets those. Those are not very special. Oh, okay. You literally, I like, have to top of extravaganza for that. I don't think that's uh, that's that's saying much. No, but like I don't know, like I I yeah, I don't yeah. If you get burned out by playing UK locals at five in the morning, that's probably something uh, <laughs> to not continue then. But uh, I, then again, that's completely your own uh, choice. I know I, I'll be sleeping at five a.m. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, no, I do appreciate that. Uh, I will. I I like in real life way better because like at least you can hang out with people, and I just like do way better when I'm in real life. I can just like see the board better, and uh, I just play way better. Sure. Um. So sure, actually. Sure. Yeah, it's a way way better like way to play the game. Yeah. So that's good. Raphael gave me permission that I don't have to do remote to locals every day. I can just go to freaking card addiction. So we will do that. Maybe we'll do that tonight. What is card addiction? Is that is that the name of your local? Yes. Maybe I shouldn't have said that on public okay. stream, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. Like you should definitely just go to like real life locals, like remote to locals. So yeah. sorry. I got this. Like, I, I'm going to like real life locals next next week. We have like an extravaganza. Uh, which I guess is like kind of nice, but I'm going to locals because my locals in is in real life, so I'm definitely just playing two locals. Cause fuck remote, like <laughs> only for like stuff like the YCS or like invitationals, I definitely like enter because like the prizes are very like insane. But if I have to choose between extravaganza and and and, and a, in real life like OTS local, I definitely should go to the locals because like. That's the that's the way you should be, you you are supposed to play Yu Gi Oh, not like, not like in your bedroom or at my dinner table. Like that's not how how in my opinion, the way the game should be played. So. Okay, I do appreciate that actually. Thank you. Okay, what is your ultimate goal? Uh, win worlds, I guess. That's like I I think every like, um, uh, like. Yu-Gi-Oh players should probably like strive to get the rolls. Uh, it's pretty impossible though. Like getting to rolls already is such a struggle. Uh, I do still have that dream. Um, I I am I will be playing for like a lot of more years though. So who knows? But definitely like want to get back to rolls, which I think is a more manageable goal. Uh, and then we'll see from there. I would also still like to get a, a like. Of course, this was my third win, but it was the remote duel. So I I would really like to have another like win in real life when when events return so like a fourth win i guess that would be cool okay fair enough gabriel i can't type that's why i said it like that also thanks for the follow um okay yeah i don't want to go to worlds i just want to top a ycs and then that'll be the conclusion to my road to ycs series and then i can like i don't know move on with my life i'm too old to play <clears throat> this game honestly uh let's see do I don't think that. I don't think that <laughs> at all. But I'm, I'm like, I don't old. think there's an age limit. So. <laughs> I actually, uh, uh, like, I was playing against this guy in a remote duel, and he showed his camera to the face, and he was a bit older, and um, I kind of blurted out, "Oh my God, you're a seasoned player!" And I didn't really mean to, like, you know, call him old, but he was like, "You called me old," and I was like, "I'm sorry. I just meant you were experienced." That's kind of mean. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm a little terrible. I kind of don't think that hard before but, I speak. Yeah, I don't think anyone's, like, too old for this game. I think that's a very, like... Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a bit toxic mentality to, like, think, okay, you're now you're furry, you can't play this game anymore. That's not how this works. I don't... Like, I'm 23 right now, but I could see myself playing this game uh, for another, like, 10 years. Easy. As long as it stays fun. And as long as the people I hang out with keep playing the game, that's the most important. Because if... If like the friends I met through this game, which are like basically became my my lifelong friends, also outside of the game. Like I I just came back from a vacation in Greece. From like uh, I stayed with friends who I met through the Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I, without the game, I would never met these people. But if all of those like would move on with their lives and and st and quit the game at that point, 
I would ask myself the question, hey, is this still worth playing? But as long as those people keep playing, I'll be there too, so. That's a sweet mentality. I like that. See, I don't have to feel bad. Tassim, you can't call me old anymore. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, oh, all right. All right. I, I really like this card. And I think it's a sleeper card, but no one agrees with me. So every pro player I talk to, I ask them, what do you think of Mystical Wrath Panel? Be honest. Um, not really playable. <laughs> Think about it. Everyone has like prosperities, desires, dualities. Yeah, but it's a trap. Yeah, but if you're going first, you know your opponent's gonna do it. You make them pay the cost, and you get the benefit. Think about it. <laughs> it's, it's it's very situa it's very situational, and it's a trap, which means it's only good fifty percent of the time. Except like traps are only good like fifty percent of the time. Except if they're like red reboot. Um, so if you're trap, if you're playing traps, they need to be like extremely powerful, like strike or revel, like those traps. Not mystical ref pedal. Sorry. Okay, it was worth a shot. I will die on this hill. Okay, I will die on this hill. Um, if you could randomly bring oh, back okay. one banned card, like Snatchio was brought back one format, what would that be and why? Oh shit, I, I actually didn't prepare for this one. Uh, what would I bring back? Uh, oh, of course, that would be Loon Light Tiger. Oh, okay. Because she did not nothing wrong. Yes, uh, we do have some Loon Light fans, like Tracy. She'll be happy to hear that. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, a lot of people that follow me uh, are like casual people. And um, they may have never really gone to a locals before. They have like a lot of anxiety. Um, and so, do you have okay. any advice for anyone who has anxiety going to locals? Uh, I think you should start by by realizing that locals is very meaningless. Like it's 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 the perfect like place to go to just like to hang out and to not like actually like care as much about the game like maybe your locals is more competitive than than like usual usually but like you should not go to locals and expect that you have to play for anything that's like there, there like there is anything on the line and uh a good locals also like my locals for example gives like does like these little lottery things for like the people who didn't win anything and like there's always a lot of people who, who like go home with something even though they didn't like do well at all and i think that's the perfect mentality for locals like locals should be like fun for everyone and like even the, like even like uh, uh, if i win locals i get like five ots packs which is like it's basically nothing like it's it's just five packs you know like i think that's perfect like locals should not have anything on the line and should not be stressful for anyone um so if you have anxiety anxiety for, for going to locals like of course I'm just speaking from my own experience, but like I, you should really like try to like realize that locals is just like meaningless. And if you lose at locals, there is like there is there's nothing on the line. Like you could like try and, and learn from your losses, and like it's perfect to like test out your deck and stuff like that because it's so meaningless. Like if you let's if you scrub locals, yeah, okay, who cares? It's just like like a few rounds. It's, it's literally like meaningless so i like and if you win okay great cool there's also like no meaning to that so like there's nothing on the line so like i would try to like have that mentality going to locals if you're if you're nervous for it like yeah okay awesome all right chat do you guys have any uh questions for Raphael before we move on to the this is the part that I'm dreading the most, honestly. Are you up for a duel or are you, if you're too tired, we don't have to play. Uh, no, I'm, I'm if you want to play, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit tired, but like, yeah, sure, we can, we can play. Okay, favorite <laughs> bad archetype. Bad archetype. I'm I'm trying to think like which archetype I played that was really really bad. Uh, oh, I think I think Arcana Force are very cool. 
Um, I had a friend like in in like middle school played that, and but those cards are unplayable because they're based on coin flips. But I think those cards are very cool. <laughs> um, there you go. Oh, is that like from the anime that like that Sartorius guy? Yeah, it's from Yu Gi Oh. Yes, yes, yeah, from it's from. Uh, Did you it's know from, he's uh, seventeen in the show? Doesn't he look like he's forty? <laughs> Oh, no, I did not know that. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was you know, uh, an adult. That's crazy. Yeah, I was like, how did this 40-year-old get into this high school? But no, he's 17, which is nuts. Okay, um, what about 42 cards? Uh, it's acceptable. It's better than 40. <laughs> I played 40, 42 in, uh, in, in Dusseldorf, I think. Should I go top 16? You look like Salomon Great. Yeah, 42 is alright. But 41 is better. Okay. What was your first competitive deck? Uh, Insector. Insector. In 2012. I think that's I, But I... I only had two Hornets, though, because Hornet was very expensive, and I was a very little kid. Oh, okay. Opinions on 60-card players? Um, they have uh, a lot of guts. I actually played 60 card once when I played uh, the Paleozoic deck with a lot of traps and grass looks greener. I've, that was one of my favorite decks of all time. My friend Joshua Schmidt also like won uh, one of Isis with it. Like that deck was really cool. But right right now without grass, 60 card is actually unplayable. Okay, what do you think about using OCG trends to prepare for future sets? Uh, it's very useful. Um, keep in mind though that you, the OCG never pans out completely like like uh, in the TCG um, for a lot of different reasons. But yeah, I think it's definitely useful to like check out what, what's, what's doing well in the OCG. I do that myself as well. Okay. Thoughts on Drytron? It's decent, <laughs> but I wouldn't pick it for like a really big event. Because of like, like I said, like you, you have like six flex spots, which means like you got, it's impossible to prepare for like five different decks. If the meta was like more defined and there were like two, two like really good decks, the right one would be better, in my opinion. Um, or when people like maybe like prepare less for it, because I, I think in the YCS, especially like three weeks ago, draw and cycle really were like in every every one side deck. So I think it was also super targeted. So I, I wouldn't play it, but. I did. I don't think like the deck does have like a high ceiling and it has like generic combos. So it's not bad. But chat says thank you and that you're a king, and I super appreciate you <laughs> taking the time to play with me. Yeah, no worries. Eh, don't worry about it. What's good? What's cool? Okay, so I'll get this interview out, and I'm sure it will go viral, and uh, you will get millions and millions of fans for sure. Ah, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Raphael. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.